right, kids, so here we go again. Uh, PC40S, uh, this is 5.2, Transformations of Sinusoidal Functions, Part 1. All right, so uh, flashback back to Chapter 1 of this course. We've got our set of transformations here. Now, A is for the vertical stretch, which in this case is our amplitude. B is our uh, horizontal stretch factor, but in this case, we use it to figure out what the period will be. So we, we go 2 pi over the absolute value of B. Now, C is a horizontal shift, or it's the starting point of our uh, one cycle. And we could also refer to this as a phase shift. So if you're looking at just shifting over the entire uh, full one cycle, the full period, then that's where it's going to start from. Uh, D is our vertical shift, and it's also known as the median. So it's like the midline of our up-down kind of thing. Uh, we could also look at it as our new x-axis. So this is the first example we're going to look at. We're going to look at y equals 3 times sine and then bracket 2x minus 2 pi by 3 plus 2. Now, you cannot do the transformations when it looks like this. You must factor, 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 factor. Okay, so here's the equation written in factored form. We factored the 2 out so we can more clearly see what is what okay now we've got our uh, original parent function of sine x here remember that and then from there we're going to plunk out what uh, the values of a b c and d are and then i'm going to go through and show you how each thing affects the graph uh, we're first going to look at the transformation of D, which is a vertical displacement or shift. So this basically moves our entire graph from here up two units to here. So now this is our new x-axis, so it's actually our y equals 2 line that the sinusoidal function is going to oscillate on. Okay, now, so then I've just dot, drawn a dotted line so I can keep that for a reference. Our next one here, this is our amplitude. So our amplitude refers to how our sine graph is stretching like this. So instead of stretching just one, it's going to be stretching three. So that's from this midline right here. It's going to go up three units from there, and then it's going to go down three units from there. So we end up at the highest point is going to be y equals 5 and the lowest point is going to be y equals negative 1. And you can clearly see that from our midline y equals 2, we have a distance of 3 units from the mid to the bottom and from the mid to the top. So this is going to help us figure out what our range is. Now, our phase shift. This tells us that we're moving things to the right. Originally, our sine graph would have a period of 2 pi, and it would start here, and it would go like that, right? But in this case, everything gets shifted over pi unit, sorry, pi by 3 units to the right. So I'm going to start drawing my sine curve here. It's going to go cross through the x-axis at 4 pi by 3, and then back up, and it's going to end at 7 pi by 3. That's for my pi by 3 shift. Okay, then finally what we're going to do here is we're going to look at what our period is going to be. So our period is, we need the b equals 2 to determine what our period is. So we take this 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b, and that gives us pi. So that means one full cycle is going to be complete in pi. Not 2 pi anymore, pi. But we also have to remember that we now start at pi by 3. So pi by 3 plus pi equals 4 pi by 3. So that's how we get where it ends. So this is now what our graph ends up looking like. So we start our graph here. So this is where 
So it's, it's actually starting right there because that's my new midline, right? And it's going to end right here. And I'm going to have to go one full cycle all the way to the top. Whoops, all the way to the top and then to the bottom. Uh, let's see, that's going to be my midway. And go down to the negative one. Okay, and then it's going to curve like that. All right, so you have one last task to do and I'm going to leave it to you. Use your brain power to figure this out. I want you to label five main points on this graph. So where is this going to be? Well, we've got this right here. Okay, so I'll give you the easy ones. I'll give you this is uh, pi by three and two. That's where we start. This where we end is going to be uh, four pi by three, two. Okay, those are two of our points. Then I want three more points. I want this point, I want the highest point here, and the lowest point here. So see if you could figure out what halfway between pi by three and four pi by three is. That's gonna be this point right here. And my Y value, of course, is going to be two. And here, my Y value is going to be negative one. And this X is going to be halfway between this and this. And same idea goes for this point right here. My Y value is going to be five. So what is the X value going to be? It's going to be between these two values right there. So I'm going to leave that for you to figure out. And I'm going to go on to the next question. So to summarize what we're doing here, I'm going to go on to the summary. So we've got our properties of the graph. So our central axis lies at D. Our amplitude is given, us, given to us by the absolute value of A. The period is determined by 2 pi by 2 pi divided by the absolute value of B. Our phase shift is C, so that's how far left or right I start. And my max and min are determined by D plus or minus the absolute value of A, and that's also how I get my range. All right, so there are two more examples here. They are, all, this one's already factored for you, and I believe the next one is already factored for you as well. So why don't you give those a try, and then hit, well, hit pause and give those a try, and then I'll show you the answers. And just, just remember that this is a negative, so that means we're going to like flip it over the x-axis. Okay, so for this first example, now that you're back and you've tried it, here's some calculations that I've needed. Uh, my, my amplitude, I'm going to use this 3 for that. It's going to also be a flip. See here, you've got your sign and then you've got your negative sign. Uh, my period is going to be 4, so that means I'm going to have 4, I'm going to use 4 units to, to go in one full cycle. And my phase shift is 1 unit over to the right, and I shift down 2 units. So here is what my graph looks like. All right, and then for the next one, I've got an amplitude of 4, my period is pi, uh, my phase shift is pi by 4 to the left, and uh, my everything is shifted 3 units up. Alright, so this is where we're going to, we're going to start from here and then we're going to end here, okay? So you can see that in my graph. This was the original cos, and this is how all the shifts have been, all the shifts have been applied, and that's what you end up with. All right, so that's the end of that. There is some homework questions for you to try uh, on page 250, numbers one, two, and three. So give those a go, and uh, we'll we'll see you soon.